you know, we've got the same exact genes when we were born, when we we're 20, when we we're 50, when we we're 60, when we we're 80, when we we're 100, hopefully when we we're 120. And the question is, why is your body look different? Why does your hair get white? Why do you get flabby? And it's not the genes you have, your genetics uh, are not, it's your, it's your transcriptome. It's which genes are on, which genes are off. And the question is, do, do you, you always have, in, do you always have inside of yourself that youthful state? And so the work that David Sinclair and George Church and a few others have been doing has been able to demonstrate that in a number of systems. And, and we were talking about our age reversal X prize. And I still believe that there's a there there. Yeah. Oh, I mean, if you took, here's the thing. If, uh, if you took everything that Sinclair is doing, all the studies and so on, and you just had a lab. Um, so first of all, the first thing you need is the ultimate longevity um, predictor or biomarker or whatever, right? And sure. maybe that that literally could be imaging. And here's why: is you know the most obvious thing you can do with machine learning with with faces is you can try and predict age, and that's actually pretty good. There's good algorithms out there because you've got lots of training data. You've got literally billions of photos of people where you know exactly their birth date and their age. You have a smaller data set, but still extant of folks who have passed away. And if you take past photos of them, you can actually predict their life expectancy from their face. Interesting. Right? So is anybody doing that right now? Um, I want to actually fund a study like that if no one's doing I would that. love to do that with you. Okay, Because I think that that's really that's really great. I know, do you know Alex Zevrankov um, from uh, in Silicon the Medicine? Yeah. So is I think it, Alex has done some work in that area, but uh, I think it's a really important element for sure. So, so let's, because basically there obviously are millions of photos of people who have unfortunately passed away, right? You have, yeah. that's very, that's an incredibly solid data set for machine learning purposes because you've got an incredibly quantifiable yeah. endpoint, right? It's a current date. It's, it's, a, no bull, it's a no bullshit uh, situation. No bullshit it's situation, been, right? Yeah, so pull, it's pull out the plastic surgery, uh, pull out the Cardassians and you're fine. Yeah, <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> but, but even that is kind of interesting because given a large enough data set, you could quantify how much younger that actually made you look if, if it did, right? Um, and of course, you, if you given a large enough data set, you could use for different ethnicities. A big part of this will frankly just be assembling that data set um, and so that's like the hard part, I think more than running the algorithm, right? Okay, let's say you can do that. Now you could hold up your phone and it could tell you number of years to live. Okay, that's depressing, but, <laughs> but, but here's the good part. Now you can do Delta Delta T where every single potential intervention from metformin to whatever, right? Yes. Will, if, you know, the reason that, um, you know, the picture of Dorian Gray, you're familiar with yes. that book? Yeah. Yes, so it's yes. like, you know, the, the portrait on the wall, ages, whatever. You know, this is something where people's eyes, you know, when people say, oh, you look healthy, you look unhealthy, there's there's a zillion things that are happening behind the scenes in somebody's appearance. Our, our brains have been trained over over millennia to understand that. That's right. And yeah. when someone loses yeah. weight or gets fit, they're like, wow, you look younger yeah. and so on. There's probably something real that's happening epigenetically or whatever, right? And uh, so I think that um, something... Basically, imagine a magic mirror on the wall, okay? Mm -hmm. And it was an AI mirror. And you know you have to figure out the data privacy stuff. Maybe there's a local server or what have you, okay? And it will literally tell you um, all kinds of stuff on your health just by imaging. For example, do you see that thing, this is almost 10 years old, where they could predict pulse from your uh, from a video? From, flush, from uh, the capillary flush on your face and such? Yeah, exactly. So pulse yeah, detection. Sure. This is like 10 years ago. They're doing pulse detection from like, you know, head motion or from like the, uh, like a slight flush in your face, right? And yeah. um, this is something where, you know, I think where you can get with medical imaging from like the amazing high def cameras we've got and all the ML we've got, I think is so far beyond where people think, right? So one of the reasons you don't have that is FDA has been holding that back. All kinds of medical imaging stuff. For example, here's a rare story mm -hmm. on this. So essentially like, why can't you just hold up your phone and like yeah. image some mole or something like that and immediately have a million examples from around the world that can benchmark that was cancerous, that was non-cancerous. That should be totally free. That should be totally available. Answer is FDA, right? And more generally, well, the medical the, establishment. The, the medical establishment, right? Because they were, for the longest time, AI was able to read an EKG better than the cardiologist. Better but, than most. There'll always be some guy who's like the expert, expert, expert. Yeah, but, and they'll but say the it's not better than the best. And that's why they'll yeah, block it. Or, or and, reason, yeah. and the association of cardiologists or the association of dermatologists or whatever don't want to lose their job. All of a that's sudden, right. they're being replaced by an algorithm i don't want this wait 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 wait! i've got a solution to that i've got a solution Go so, for it. so i actually do think uh, a non-obvious factor that's going to change all of this is india okay 
Why? Because India is coming online. India has- In a, a huge lot, way. In a huge, huge, huge way. It is maybe the single most obviously underpriced thing in my view on this decade. And I, I want to talk about India, but, but I don't want to rabbit the hole. Specific, okay, okay, let me okay. specific relevance here. Basically, India has a lot of, so India has over the last 50 years actually built a reputation of having a lot of good doctors, right? Something like, I forget 10, 20% or something of the doctors in the US are of Indian origin, okay? More if you include South Asian. That's yeah, it's number. amazing. It's amazing, right? Okay. Yeah. And that's just like, so now because of that, um, Indians also have done a lot in software, number three in tech unicorns. And uh, so it's totally, and crucially, domestically, they've got a generic drug industry. Um, where they don't actually abide by this artificial scarcity of IP, they can crank out generic drugs, and that's like a huge thing. They've got great chemists, right? So you've, you, and then finally, telemedicine has now finally been quasi legalized in the U.S. There are various things, and, that you, and you've got folks like Ukesh Ambani who's investing heavily into the entire medical area. I mean, mass amount of capital is going in. That's right. So you put all that together, and you've got an aging population in the U.S. and you've got price pressure and whatnot. I think it's quite possible you start seeing telemedicine come in from India, right? Oh, for sure. And maybe there's an Indian American doctor over here who's routing it, okay? And so they're like signing off within the system. You have that like legal kind of thing. And they're the ones who, maybe they send it to an Indian service that has different regulations and that allows you to actually just automatically read this because that disruptive technology is something where this huge, I mean, one of the reasons, you know, the AMA and others, they didn't want that many so-called FMGs, foreign medical graduates to enter the US because it did bring price pressure down, right? Now, suddenly all those guys are online. All of them are ambitious and they're seeking, you know, like, so, so there is something here where there's a giant force. There's software there's a that next step. There's a next step here, which yeah. is, you know, in the interim, before we have AI, we have the crowd, right? And Indian physicians and nurses and, uh, and software engineers are the crowd. Eventually, though, I mean, AI, even today right now, AI is likely better as a diagnostician than most physicians. And in the very near future, you provide an AI, the data, the imagery, the information. I mean, I found this out. Do you, take a guess. How it's many, more reliable, it's cheaper. How many, it's, yeah, well, but they yeah. don't under, the, the average physician hasn't read any of the articles published that day, let alone, right? So how, do you take a guess how many scientific publications are, don't Google, are published per day? Oh, it's easily, easily a thousand. Uh, it's it's probably it's it's more than that. It's what is it like a few million articles a year? It's probably about three four thousand, right? Is okay, that right? good good guess. Yes, it's four thousand nine hundred. Uh, it's one point eight million articles per year in twenty eight thousand journals. Yeah. Yep. And so it's like, how many has your physician read that morning? So yeah. it's like insane, right? right? And it might have been the breakthrough that morning that's going to diagnose you or treat you.